Hi there. Before we hop onto today's video, we got a sponsor for today's upload. It is Tempest Tower of Probatio, a brand new collectible card game. Let's talk about it. Tempest Tower of Probatio, a brand new collectible card game that revolutionizes strategic card battling with its unique band pick phase. Designed for fast paced, engaging gameplay where every move counts. Are you a casual or a god tier card gamer such as myself? Probably not, you probably suck, but it doesn't matter because this game is ideal for players of all skill levels. There are over 300 cards to choose from when building your deck. Each hero comes with unique abilities ready to support your path to victory. What truly stands out in Tempest Tower of Probatio is the ban phase alongside the hero pick. Before the game starts, you can see all of your opponent's cards and ban one of them. Then, you proceed with the game by picking one hero out of the three options given to you. Concerned about not being able to keep up with the game over time? Season resets? New content? Relax, Timmy. Even after season resets, you can return and play effortlessly, keeping your progress intact. In a match, you must empower the towers to win the game. Towers initially lack abilities. The game is not just about card-on-card -card interaction, but how these mix with the towers themselves. For all Tempest players, you're guaranteed a free trial as the first day login reward. This is a one-time only chance and allows users to copy other players' decks and play games for a limited time, even if they don't own the cards. Thank you to Tempest Tower Probatio for sponsoring today's video. There will be a link in the description down below and in a pinned comment as well. Click on it, try out the game, and pray you don't queue into me. Oh snap. Let's get on with the video, shall we? As today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna bring you movement with goblins in a deck called Moblins. Brilliant name, I know. A deck that is thriving after the latest balance patch, the Oda balance patch. Now I say Oda because that's how it's called, but I don't actually know what this means. I probably should. <laughs> As a professional comic creator, I probably should have looked this up and be like, okay, Oda stands for this. I I don't know. I <laughs> I got lazy about it. What I do know is that old Oda balance patches are generally um, more numerical. So they are essentially like less about reworking cards specifically and more about, you know, tweaking energy cost and stat lines. So they are inherently less impactful than the actual regular patches. We can expect the next one on March 12th, by the way. So 11 days from now. Uh, the Oda changes generally are, are less impactful, like I said, but this one, I argue, is pretty crazy. It, it actually does a lot. If you click on news and you go to the balance update for February 29th, this will take you to, uh, to a, uh, a browser link and uh, it will show you all the changes that happened. A lot of people are talking about the Adam Warlock change. Um, in case you don't know, <laughs> Adam Warlock, if you go to the like Marvel Snap Reddit, literally every post is talking about Adam Warlock just uh, being essentially useless, getting the Miguel Ohana uh, treatment, <laughs> which is <laughs> turn him into a five drop, right? A five drop that would draw your card. I'm not gonna dive too much into this, but th this seems like a subject of like a lot of debate. Um, I do think, um, you know, people are, you know, like obviously I, I don't expect it to be good, but I think people are also like immediately like knee jerking into a reaction here when you know there is some room for experimentation i think that that should be respected of combining this with magic and maybe enabling some sort of archetype that can really benefit from uh developing a weak turn five play but uh drawing through your deck uh because of a specific combo you want to pull off but you know uh Again, not gonna, not gonna go on an insane tangent here, but um, that's what most people are talking about, even though the most relevant change by far is the Lockjaw change, which is amazing. Uh, Lockjaw decks have been dominating the meta, whether it's in the form of Thanos or Hela. I think this is single-handedly the most problematic card in the game, and I went on quite the, 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 you know, the ramble on stream as to how, basically I'm extremely happy about this change and i think this change alone makes this patch very very solid and incredibly impactful towards the meta but there's also a change that really caught my eye i'm a move enthusiast i i like playing move decks they're edgy they're like the most complicated archetype in the game which makes me feel like i'm smart and it's just something that i try to uh really uh optimize again and again vulture is a crazy buff 
for the archetype. It seems like it's not much at first. It's gone from a plus five power to a plus six power boost whenever this card moves, but that makes it so that the first time you combo into Vulture, you have nine power, which is the perfect stat line in Marvel Snap for a mid-game card because you're able to generate a lot of force without being vulnerable to Shang-Chi. That's very relevant. Two movements with this thing puts it at 15 power. That is crazy. That is actually crazy. And considering all the small buffs and large buffs too, that the move archetype has been racking up over the last few months, like the dagger buff, which is, you know, we're gonna talk about it for a little bit, but also the Heimdall buff going up to nine power. Uh, this is like a really, really big deal. Like these things, these numbers add, obviously in the game that rolls around once that, but they really do add a lot. And the dagger change I argue is really wild because I think this card is a little bit broken to be honest if played correctly the problem is most people do not know how to play dagger properly i see a lot of people dropping dagger early in the game which is the last thing you want to do you want to wait for turn five or six ideally to play this uh, a lot of people combine dagger with cloak and while i believe that it allows you to generate the most power it also makes the deck less consistent because it gives a lot of agency to the opponent and makes their their sequencing more unpredictable and thus mm, turns the end game into more of a dice roll in my opinion i've i've been a, ba a fan of cloak and dagger since the beginning but i'm kind of falling off of that because i i i think um that's just not the more reliable way to play move i want to play a move deck where i'm the one moving i'm moving not only my own stuff but my opponent's stuff and i'm potentially clogging them because clogging them aka filling up a location so they can't play more cards there happens to benefit dagger as well and the goblins work really well with heimdall i think this will end up being one of if not the best uh version of a move deck because goblins functioning with with a heimdall finisher is really a, it's definitely a, a right way to approach it because what we're doing here is ideally we, we hop goblin on turn five and then we heimdall on turn six it's very simple as to why this works really well, but I'm going to explain it nonetheless. We play Hobgoblin on the right location. Heimdall's weakness is that you have a difficult time sticking points to the right location because everything is moving to the left. But if you play a Hobgoblin, not only are you generating eight points, but you're also taking away one of the four spaces your opponent is going to have on that lane. And then you can play Heimdall into the same location. You can allocate 17 points on the right, and because the Hobgoblin has infiltrated the opponent's board, he will not mean moving when Heimdall is played. One of the few plays that can actually not move after you play Heimdall, and that's why they function really well together. But there's a lot more to the Goblins in the deck than just that. Like, that's only the tip of the iceberg, baby. We got, we got a lot going on here. We got Ghost Spider, the best variant, by the way alongside iron fist which we can use to move the goblins we can iron fist into a goblin and the goblin moves there if you play a goblin and then you play, you play ghost spider after ghost spider will drag that goblin over there and it allows you to safely clog lanes i say safely because if you iron fist into a into a green goblin for example when this happens if the opponent is worried about you trying to clog up their location and they, and they preemptively play something there to fill it then you know you you still get to infiltrate the, the green goblin you don't end up with a green goblin on your board it just doesn't end up moving to the left so it's it's a more it's a safer play that also happens to synergize into the likes of craven and kingpin now i want to uh, clarify this kingpin is solid in this deck i i like it i love to be able to, to play my noir kingpin variant one of my favorite variants in the game and i just really like the card i like what they did with the redesign but um, after further evaluation, the reality is the deck is ultimately better with Ravona Renslayer instead. I don't have Ravona Renslayer, but if you have her, you can definitely swap out Kingpin for her. The reason why Ravona Renslayer is very good in this deck is because she works well with the goblins and dagger. Your cards with one or less power cost one less. So by developing Ravona Renslayer, what this means is we can potentially hop goblin into dagger on turn five for setting up for a turn six Heimdall. That is nuts. 
that is being able to play dagger alongside hobgoblin is nuts it just allows you to uh, chain a lot of these goblins with other cards as well maybe there's some evaluation to be made regarding the curve because of this like i said i haven't experimented with the card myself but i legitimately do believe that it will uh end up making the deck better this deck tech is a little bit long um i understand but you know i i really want to break this deck down because you know put a lot of thought into it and uh, it seems kind of basic but it's actually it's got a lot going on for it so we have polaris and spider-man polaris and spider-man can uh alongside the goblins can allow you to clog up certain locations enhancing your matchup against thanos decks for example uh they synergize well into craven and kingpin like i said kingpin is is definitely pulling his weight in this deck we got shang chi because sometimes things are really big and we need to have that premier tech card to make sure that we don't lose to the greediest of decks and ultimately, that's how the deck functions. Not every turn is gonna be a not every turn six is gonna be a, a Heimdall. A lot of times it's gonna be a Shang Chi into like, like a Ghost Spider dragging the dagger that you set up the turn prior into a Shang Chi. If you have a Ravona, for example, you can play Shang Chi into Dagger Ghost Spider, or rather Dagger Ghost Spider and then Shang Chi in case you're, you're allocating them in same, the same location, right? Like Ravona does enhance your your end game plays a lot as well. But ultimately, it's a deck that combines movement. Uh, really powerful engines and dagger and vulture and also a lot of disruption by moving our opponent's cards around and then we can surprise them with the heimdall turn six really really strong deck that got me climbing like crazy um, i'm a big believer in this list and i hope you guys enjoyed it as much as i did i'm gonna stop branding thank you guys for watching stay tuned for daily marvel snap content hope you enjoy the games i'll see you guys tomorrow they need to they need to play like the the time stone on turn two to to ramp it to lockjaw and if they don't ramp it to lockjaw they play lockjaw on turn four and they can't like vision or or like leech on turn five it's amazing it's actually amazing F that stupid ass deck I enjoy playing ladder more because I, I just run into different decks all the time. Conquest is fun, but you also have to grind a deck that's just universally very, very good. Look at that vulture. Nice. Will they try to Galactus me? Are they are they really gonna be that obvious? Well, let's see it. kind of awkward here though because all, all my cards are like a little bit problematic they can move Jeff here to tie what's wrong with like just just a, a Heimdall on the right oh Jeff already, Jeff already moved Jeff already moved through they could have a Shang-Chi so we just need to beat a Shang-Chi It's always Heimdall on the right. Yeah. Victory. And yeah, I've just I've been I'm not happy with my place today, basically. So I just I want to I want to try to do some climbing. I'm not I'm not, I'm not gonna cook. Mm, do I steal? Do I steal your Zabu potentially?
good Spider-Man here. Oh, make a low. Fucking Mobius, dude. We're gonna hop Goblin mid. Always. Yo, what's the best thing I can do as a new player, content-wise? What do you mean? What do you mean, content-wise? They have initiative as a Sarah deck, which is not good. And if I top the Ghost Spider, that's all I need. risky play but i like sometimes it's just like okay what are they gonna do right like does this make sense for them to do that Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi to me! Hey! Yeah. Snap coward? That would be that would be the boomerest of snaps. Let's not snap to the Bifrost immediately. Okay. Snap.
guys. Um, you're not going to believe me, but I think this is hella. Wait, didn't they discard a sunspot? They play sunspot with Black Knight? What? I mean, they know we they know we have time though. They know we have time though. We just need to be wary of of Maginito. But playing, yeah. Victory. Nice hella, bro. Yo, I've been playing 2099 in Move, and he's actually not as bad as I thought. Um, yeah, he's terrible. You can enjoy that coping all you want, man, but I'm not, I'm not partaking. They have initiative. Alonso likes to clog. I don't know why I didn't play him here. No, I, I mean on the right, but it, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, they rammed the Dr. Octopus in the middle. I have to win both other locations, so oh, this is bad, this is bad. Um, I'm gonna play... How many cars have they killed? They destroyed like this once. They can't even like. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, you you got like you got me with this Professor X, but you like you're destroy. Like you need to destroy stuff, otherwise you're weak as hell. You can't even death, boy. Seven energy death. Hey, I just got back. What are your thoughts on the patch? Um, I love it. I love the change to Lockjaw. We're playing some movement now. Trying to uh, recover my rank a little bit. Untilt. 
because it's it's been a tilting day. And I'm I'm also waiting for this this fucking thing to go away. We're almost there. I'm gonna play um, Craven here. Nice. Polaris, even though there's nothing to move, um, I want to capitalize on more island here. It's 12 points is Magneto, but then then these two are still enough to win. Oh shit! I didn't know they played. Um, I didn't know they played Shang Chi. Chi Chi. I wasn't expecting Shang Chi. Nor Nico Minoru, to be honest. Yeah, that was a very unexpected endgame. Very unexpected. This is like, I, I honestly don't know how obvious this, this play is. I don't think Green Goblin is extremely common. So... Got him. Keck insane, baby. I like uh, Polaris on the right, moving the Mobius. The Morbius out of there. Oh, five that was out, okay. Talk about a high roll. I can XD Dean, but they don't see me, so that's that doesn't count. No movement engines. An X mansion. A madman snaps here.
<laughs> what a what a dumb joke. Okay, cool. What do I get? That's fair. vision bro how vulnerable are we to shang chi if they shang chi here but they don't move vision 14 points 17 points we tie we win the tiebreaker they definitely play shang chi so sniping here is a mistake i have no shang chi chart targets i don't like that i just tie though Not this. You don't rule this. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Limbiscus, Limbiscus, smile on you. I'll play it in your honor, Limbiscuit. Uh, they snap. Um, they have eight. Cards, they're not Thanos. Uh, sure, let me see what you have. Oh, you're destroy, and you okay? We need to gain. <laughs> oh, see, that's why you don't turn one snap, man. Like, you just don't turn one snap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Omega lol. Omega lol. Oh, oh, oh. We got Giganto, so we don't we don't wanna we wanna we want a friendly neighbor of Spider Man over here. Where do you think the real Mysterio is at? Ah, uh, let's go mid. Let's go mid. Actually, we should have gone right because of of. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. I mean, we don't need to Giganto there. We just there's no way they developed the real Mysterio on the right. So something as simple as a Kingpin. We'll do it. We're going to play Dagger here in case we want a Heimdall. He has a ton of energy now. Yes, but he's clogged. And this Heimdall is everything.
Not even worried. Victory. Oh, my layup. Okay. Was there like a lot of backlash or? That's crazy. That's amazing. That was like literally like two days. I mean, honestly, like, let's be real. Like, I, I can't take a country that like bans a, a website. Like, ser you can't take a country like that seriously. That's just r ridiculous. Good, good for them. And honestly, fuck the people who did that. Like, that's just that's just nonsense. Fuck the people who push for that, for censorship like that. That's just ridiculous. In twenty in twenty twenty four, like, come on. Like, actually absurd. Dracula into the kiln is very threatening, but this is the beauty of Hobgoblin and movement. We Hobgoblin on the right. And we Heimdall for the win. Hobgoblin into Heimdall is amazing. The Modoc. Mm -hmm. Shut down. Shut down. Apocalypse. Fuck off, Apocalypse. Victory. This is the strength of like Hobgoblin is insane for the movement archetype. You Hobgoblin on the right, you Heimdall on the right, and you've allocated points into this location that will not move with Heimdall, which is huge. I have Ghost Spider here. Look, guys, look at my Ghost Spider. No, 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 come back, come back, come back, come back. Stay. Let's, let's look at her. You goofed yourself with that that Cosmo. Like, if you want to play into the Cosmo lane, you need to draw a lot. I could play Shang Chi. What if I? What if instead of this, I play Iron Fist into Shang Chi? 
Shang-Chi moving here is three. It, it makes me tie. We have to go mid. We have to go mid no matter what. Mid is the play. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the Vulture buff, baby! Victory. Vulture is nuts now. Like Vulture and nine. Honestly, Vulture did not need to get buffed like that, but I welcome it. I welcome it.